Uh, my favourite piece of music would probably be Bach's Art of the Fugue. It's something you just listen to again and again, and there's a mystery about it, which is, did he really write it as a piece of music, or was it written for some other purpose, for, for teaching or, or, or learning or whatever? Nobody's quite sure about this piece of music, but it has a magical theme to it, and I, I just never tire of listening to it. Uh, opera, I should think, uh, a performance of uh, Katya Kapanova, Janacek's opera, I always, will always remember. Um, but I don't think any, any particular classical concert stands out. I did once go and hear Otto Klemperer conduct, and that was a very long time ago, but that was a real treat. Well, we are a creative hub. We're one of the world's great creative hubs, I think, in terms of film, whether you talk about pop music or whatever. And wherever I go with uh, business delegations abroad, you know, it's either, either sport or it's popular music or um, British filmmaking. Think of the two, two of the three great brands, actually. Um, the Superman as well, but, you know, James Bond and Harry Potter. These are both uh, British brands for which we're known the world over. Uh, yeah, the last one I saw was uh, earlier in the summer, which was Michael Frayn's Democracy at the Old Vic, uh, which was a um, uh, terrific performance, really based on, uh, on the uh, politics of Germany in the 1970s. Um, and uh, I think the Old Vic's a great theatre. And I think that I also love the Young Vic space they have there as well for new talent given the performing space in London. Uh, I should also mention, I suppose, uh, the, other than that, it was the School's Shakespeare Festival in my constituency in Folkestone at the Porterhouse, uh, which is a new performing arts space in Folkestone. Well, so the favourite one I've seen perform live, if you like, was probably um, Enron at the, um, which uh, Sam West was leading at the time. I saw it uh, when it was in preview at the Royal Court Theatre, and that was uh, amazing. And not, you know, at the time was incredibly relevant because it was uh, produced about Enron, but was put on stage when the banking crisis was taking place. So it just shows you how art is a relevant mirror to life. Well, and the great thing is that it's, uh, the UK is a place where talent from around the world wants to come and work and also it creates fantastic opportunities for, for people in this country as well and we do that because we've got a, I think a real appetite for creative content, uh, we protect uh, its, the intellectual property around it and we give a fair means for people to license that work so it's a place where people can run a creative business as well as enjoy taking part in great performance. Yeah, it was uh, Hilary Mantel's Bring Up the Bodies, which is the follow-up in the uh, Thomas Cromwell trilogy. Uh, a fantastic book, it's up for uh, the Booker Prize, and uh, a brilliant account of the life and times of Thomas Cromwell. Um, too many to choose from in one way, but I think it would have to be Anna Karenina, just simply for the amazing story, the love story, but also the the sense of history you get from it and the tragic nature of the of the story. Well, UK creativity depends entirely upon intellectual property and if you protect intellectual property and allow it to be uh, used in the way that the creators wish, then you will have strong creative industries. So that means government getting that environment right, having strong enforcement, but more importantly than that, not eroding copyright, but allowing companies to work with it and not give in to those voices uh, who would like to see it eroded so that they can um, make money out of things which they don't own. My favourite British band is definitely Muse. And having just bought their album just a couple of days ago and was listening it on the way up to conference, uh, but they're a band that I first saw in Nottingham and I was blown away that just three people could create that amount of noise and energy and had such passion for music. I guess I've always liked guitar music, so that's the part of it. But I've been to see Muse about 11 or 12 times now. Well, I think one of the things that the UK does well is it is a good place for people to come and people enjoy it. It has an international reputation. And we need to make sure that that continues and that it's easy for our creative artists to get in. Um, I know that there have been some issues and so we need to work on that on immigration. But actually it's also about the skills that we have here. So whether it's filmmaking, um, you know, Skyfall coming out in the next uh, uh, few weeks, 
uh, whether it's about our live uh, theatre, is actually just making sure that the skills are there, the quality is there, because ultimately it's going to be the quality of what uh, people produce, their talent, how that's maximised. And I think as long as we keep our eye on the main prize then we, of quality, then we will make sure that there will always be opportunities. Uh, of all time, well, I guess I'm going to answer that with two answers. Uh, first of all, Black Sabbath from the olden days, and uh, Iron Maiden. You can't uh, say that uh, they're, they're just a superb uh, for overseas earnings and for uh, whatever's British around the world. They really export to so the Britishness very well. So I think Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden on a par for me as my two favourite bands. Well, my favourite one, I guess, would be. Uh, well, again, three. Uh, I'm, Iron Maiden, when they did their Stranger in a Strange Land tour, Queensryche, when they did their um, Operation Mindcrime tour, and except from Germany, when they did their Russian Roulette tour. But the last uh, gig I went to was the Download Festival, and that was quite uh, an amazing experience. 100,000 people there. Media totally ignored it, but it was just, just a fantastic experience, despite the huge amount of rain that we had at the time. Well, one of my, my big, big concerns is that we're giving away music too cheaply on the internet. And we need to try and stop people, we need to educate people that if they download music for free forever, they're going to get nothing in return in the long term. So we need to educate people that they should start paying for their music. But secondly, we need to educate the people who provide music that they can't start charging the same as they would for CDs. They need to change their business models, which might include putting t-shirts or gigs or something with the music that they actually sell. And the, and the last thing is that if by, after you've educated and done the carrot side, then we need to do the stick side. We're actually stopping people by downloading for free. Um, that is going to be a threat in the future, not just for music, but for films and other things as well. So that's my, one of my big concerns about the future. The last musical performance I went to was the um, Battle of the Bands in Manchester for the UK Music Party at Labour Party Conference and we saw Maya and the Endings and Dirty North. Fantastic night and ended up with a bit of a real battle of the bands between Dirty North and the Endings who didn't like the way each other treated each other on stage but Maya won so that won that, that battle. Um, my absolute favourite British artist of all time is David Bowie for many reasons because I love him, I love the way he dresses, I love his character and I think Wild is the Wind is the best song ever written. Um, I think we need to uh, develop creative people. This country is brilliant for creativity. We have the most extraordinary, unique, wacky people in this country and I think as long as we keep that British spirit going and have a strong IP regime, I think we will have a great future in this country. The last film that I saw at cinema was The Artist. Um, and the reason that I went to the cinema to see that is because I think with a film like that, uh, you needed to see it fresh, but also in a, on a big screen. We do see a lot of films at home uh, in my household. And I've got three boys, um, including my husband. And so we tend to watch an awful lot of action, adventure, and dramery type things that boys like watching. So to go to the cinema and watch something more for me, uh, and more grown up was absolutely excellent and it was a really great film. I have to say something like Gone with the Wind which was completely overwhelming, completely absorbing. I remember crying my eyes out um, and I think it's uh, got a lot of messages even for today but it was a fantastic story and, a, uh, and an unfolding drama and a historical context which is really still worth watching now. What we're so good at in Great Britain is making good films but we don't have a system like they have in the USA or in some other countries um, and one of the things that's been really valuable is the uh, tax break for making movies and then more recently what the government has done um, focusing on high-end drama, television drama, which is so valuable and so exportable because we're so good at it um, and also for animation um, and I think 
the realization that uh, our creative industries do have real growth potential on the one hand and investing in in those sectors with tax breaks but then on the other hand not connecting your copyright policy to that so possibly taking some of that value away with new copyright exceptions is something which could go badly wrong if we don't look at this very very closely indeed and the government needs to make sure they don't do something that they wish they hadn't done and they can't undo it later. Seeing Julius Caesar uh, put on by the Royal Shakespeare Company was absolutely fantastic and my other highlights in recent years have been The King's Speech, a fantastic British film, Jerusalem and One Man Two Governors, two fantastic plays uh, and in terms of uh, video games, I tend to play on an iPhone, so I'm afraid I'm in the typical Angry Birds cut the rope uh, category. Well, I think the Olympics opening ceremony put Britain's creativity on the map. I think the world sees Britain as a creative place, and I don't think we in Britain realise just how much respect around the world we have in terms of our films, our TV formats, uh, our games designers, our visual effects industries. And what we need to do is we need to invest in the skills so that we keep a skills pipeline going for these businesses. We need to have policies that encourage investment in those businesses and we need to make sure that they can successfully export as well. And we need a strong and proper intellectual property regime that protects the content that people make because people have a right to make money from the content they create. I'm trying to remember whether it was Melancholia, the last from Trier film, or, or the Marley uh, biography. Um, I think it was probably the Marley, actually, slightly more recently than, the, than Melancholia, but both great films. Two best films I've seen this year. Oh, Casablanca it would have to be, I think, uh, because it's, a, it's an enduring classic um, uh, of, of you know, fabulously rich historical uh, detail, um, a great love story, a great drama with great music uh, and great actors um, uh, and made at a time uh, uh, of you know, international crisis and um, has stood the test of time. Well I think most importantly of all we have to have uh, public, we have to have policies in place uh, that support people's creativity uh, and allow uh, people to develop uh, their creative talents, uh, whether in school, uh, university or in their professional life. Uh, I think we have to have a, an investment policy that recognises the role that arts and culture play, uh, not just as goods in themselves, uh, but as uh, contributors to our economy, the important role they pay in, play in our economy and will play in future. Uh, our creative sector is a sector that certainly under the Labour government expanded massively uh, and earned this country a lot of money uh, both domestically and around the world and it's, it's a sector that will continue to grow uh, in future years, uh, creating jobs, uh, reducing unemployment, uh, selling the British brand around the world as long as the right policies are in place that support it. Well, I've always been a massive Coronation Street fan. Um, Real life, humour, drama, brilliant characters. Uh, Steve McDonald's my favourite. I'll always be a curry fan, I reckon. Bridesmaids, that made me laugh a lot. Um, one day, that didn't make me laugh so much, but it was a great tearjerker. Um, first of all, make sure that everything doesn't happen just in Soho because there are creative people right across Britain and we need to make sure that we're hearing all the voices, all the stories, all the elements that make up our fantastic country. So make sure that everyone can get involved in the creative industries. Make sure we shout at them because we're really good at what we do. We are a really creative nation and if you want a test of that then just put on a radio channel when you go to any of um, the uh, continental countries and you'll see how good we are at pop music and making TV programmes and um, all the rest. At the moment I'm reading a marvellous book called Black Diamonds by Catherine Bailey. It's a fascinating account of the, uh, the family that have lived in, in Wentworth Woodhouse, this marvellous country house in South Yorkshire quite near to my constituency. It's, it's a wonderful story. I think it would make a, a great film if somebody wanted to turn it into a film, but, but Black Diamonds by, by Catherine Bailey is currently what I'm, I'm, what I'm reading. 
I think the creative industries is a hugely important sector of the UK economy. I think there are a number of issues that we need to address. I think we need to look very carefully at skills, ensuring that we've got the next generation of talent. I think we need to look carefully around issues of finance, making sure creative enterprises have the opportunity to get off the ground with seed corn funding. I think we need to look at the importance of supporting the regional economies and making sure that people who have creative ideas can develop those ideas outside of London. I think it's also incredibly important that we compete uh, in, a, in a global market, so our, our national competitiveness is, is very important. Also, I, I, I think IP, intellectual property, is, is a key issue for the creative industries and we need a system in place which means that people's creative content will continue to, to benefit and support their efforts, not those people who seek to, to steal it. So I think those are the, the five key issues that I'm focusing effort and interest on. And I think it's incredibly important that government recognises the importance of the creative industries and not just to our economy, but to our daily lives. Well, I'm reading a book called The White Tiger. And this is a book about society in India. And I think one of the things that we're really fortunate in this country is that not only do we have English writers, but we have the whole Anglo-Indian tradition and the tradition of English writers from the Caribbean as well. And I think our multicultural uh, society means that we have a much richer written culture today than almost any other country. Well, my favourite book of all time is War and Peace. I love Tolstoy. I love his descriptions of particular detailed things, but also the grand sweep of history. And I think these make very good films as well. I think I haven't yet seen uh, the new Anna Karenina with Keira Knightley in it, but I think these big stories do make very powerful films. And we see it with telly as well, because, for example, I love Middlemarch. And I think that um, when Rufus Sewell was in the telly version of Middlemarch, I mean, it was just an unforgettable performance. Obviously it's important that we have proper copyright protection and that's not working very well at the moment. Uh, one of the things that I'm concerned is that we have good international agreements because once people start sharing things on the net, lots of these issues about the rules of the game need to be international rules and I think that's something where the government's actually a bit behind the game. It's a bit as if we're sort of uh, setting out on sailing on the sea in, in 1550 and there's no international law of the sea. Well we have an international law of the sea and we really need an international law of the net as well. Uh, I think it has to be Kez. Uh, I'm from South York, you'll probably guess by the accent, and uh, uh, this is the first time I've ever sat and watched anything that was effectively about me. And I remember we did it watching the Rodimus Aldo, and everybody started laughing when these South Yorkshire accents came out. Well, it's a great storyline and a great test of time, you know, in terms of how can you use it now in schools. Well, I've been to so many, from the Beatles in the 60s, Meatloaf, I've seen most of his stuff, his last three farewell tours, but the latest one I went to was uh, uh, Paul Simon. He did 25 years on Graceland, and he had all the South African uh, uh, artists out with him as well, Hugh Kayla and all of them, and that was live, two and a half hours of it in Hyde Park, just this summer, hard rock calling, fantastic. 70 years of age, magnificent guy, and uh, I was just over the moon. I've been active in anti-apartheid in the uh, 70s and 80s, so, you know, seeing all this happening, what's happening in South Africa, and then seeing Graceland live for the first time, I think, anywhere in the world, 25 years almost, special. Well, I mean, we've all got to be, first of all, very conscious of it. We've got to not get or head it off it anyway, and we as legislators have got to make sure that we don't do that. And I think that over the years we've been quite supportive. Uh, and been a bit of a re recall. I, know, I like film Yorkshire. They did some good films about Yorkshire. You know, it was a county that we're very proud of. I say that, although it's over the hill from where we are now. Uh, and I think that uh, we have reined back a little bit of, of this thing that, uh, you know, was there to help the creative industries. We've done more than 
just in film, of course. And I think that that's crucially important. And you know, the Brit British films around the world uh, are watched and looked on. We win awards, and uh, we should recognise that. It doesn't come on its own. It comes because it's encouraged by us, and and sometimes by governments as well. And we want to make sure that that keeps up, carries on. And there's many other creative industries as well. I'm very conscious of the fact that you know uh, the issue now of. You know, anything that's done in film and that can be shot around the world immediately and there's a, a lot of threats to, to the creative industry and uh, we've got to tackle, we can't go back, but we've got to tackle what those threats are and governments have got to do it uh, and maybe international bodies need to do it as well. I'm just finishing Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantel, which is sequel to the previous book for which she won the Booker Prize and it's uh, set in uh, the time of Henry VIII, just to, uh, when he's uh, having his relationship with Anne Boleyn or about to, and switching to Jane Seymour. And it's seen through the eyes of his fixer, really, uh, Thomas Cromwell. And I think it's a fantastic, good read. She's got a very, very good style. You know, it flows very easily. And what I love about it is this sort of detached nature of a very detailed observation of what the times were like. I think the book that had the most influence on me uh, was Doris Lessing's Golden Notebook, which I read in my late teens. And it was just sort of, it was the one that started me off on my feminist tracks, which has been an important part of my life. Uh, and Simone de Beauvoir's The Second Sex, which I read at about the same time. They were two that sort of reasserted the position of women for me and sort of, uh, uh, I were important influences on the way I, I saw myself as a woman and uh, the way I sort of try to promote women's equality within the society. It's actually just in seeing the creative industries as being a sort of central growth area and therefore supporting the research development, supporting the development of uh, you know, little villages in urban centres where individual creative people can uh, learn from each other and sort of mix from each other and just develop, you know, create a better whole out of their interconnection than they can individually. I think the things we did around film tax credits are hugely important and I do welcome there what the government has said it's doing around uh, tax credits for, for games. That's really important. Uh, and I think um, seeing creativity not as an add-on, not as a luxury, but as an essential part of our total being will make for us continuing. Having what we it is a superb place in the world on all aspects of the creative arts.